The Southern Railway was the smallest of the railway companies which were brought together in 1948 to form British Railways. It was unique in one other way. Its principal revenue came from people, not freight, and most of its tracks carried the least willing of customers, commuters. As a result, it pursued a policy of making suburban trains as efficient as possible, and to this end, its major engineering was aimed at electrification. Steam locomotives were regarded as a stopgap until this could be extended to the main lines as well. Nevertheless, its locomotive designers produced many notable types of steam engine, including the well-known King Arthur class, the names being a masterstroke of the Southern's publicity department. One of the strangest parts of the British Railway's empire was the self-contained system on the Isle of Wight. When the Southern Railway was formed in 1923, it inherited three small separate companies on the island. All had pursued independent courses, but had standardised on small tank engines of similar design. By the time the Southern took over, they were nearly all in urgent need of replacement, so a number of engines from the largest constituent of the railway, the London and South Western Railway, were transferred to the island. These class O2 engines were small tank engines, in other words, carrying all their fuel supplies on the locomotive, which had been built in the 1890s for London commuter traffic, but became redundant there due to electrification. From 1923 to 1966, these little engines were the mainstay of the island lines, and nationalisation had little impact other than a change of livery. This engine, number 24 Calborn, is the only survivor of 60 engines, 23 of which worked on the island. The other type of engine which saw service in any quantity on the island was the Stradley Terrier. Presumably these little engines got their nickname because they had a loud bark, were small and seemed to scurry everywhere. This scene is at a new station created in 1991, Smallbrook Junction. A small part of the old Island Railway network survives as the Isle of Wight Steam Railway based at Haven Street. Here we see a terrier which had an interesting history. It was built by the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway in 1877, sold to the London and South Western in 1903 for use at Lyme Regis in Dorset and resold to the island's Freshwater and Yarmouth Railway in 1913. It passed to the Southern Railway and became W2 and later W8 in the special number series reserved for these engines. It returned to the mainland in 1949 and was sold to the Hailing Island Preservation Society in 1963. Eventually, it returned to the island for restoration to working order. 
freshwaters career on the Lyme Regis branch was relived in 1953, when 32662, another member of the class, was used with the terrier's successor on the Lyme Regis branch, the London and South Western Railway Adams radial tank. Three of these locomotives were retained to work this branch, which was built to a very light specification. These engines had been the predecessors to the O2 tanks on London suburban services in the 1880s, but had become obsolete before the First World War. All but three were scrapped in the 1920s, the peculiarities of the Lyme Regis branch ensuring that they survived until the 1960s. This meant that number 30583 reached preservation on the Bluewell Railway in its original southwestern condition as number 488. Another oddity to survive to the preservation era was the BT well tank. Two out of three which worked in Cornwall to the early 1960s have been retained. This one worked for a while in the 1960s and 70s at the Buckingham Railway Centre at Quainton Road. The engines were an even earlier suburban design, all of which were scrapped in the last century. They owed their survival to another lightly laid branch line near Bodmin in Cornwall. This was part of the historic Bodmin and Wadebridge Railway one of the earliest in the country, which became part of a battle between the London and South Western and Great Western Railways for the domination of the duchy. All three engines were withdrawn by British Railways in 1962, this engine being retained by the National Railway Museum in view of its historic importance. It was one of the few early Victorian designs to survive into BR service, although it had long ago ceased to look as it had when built, having been completely rebuilt three times in its lifetime. The Southwestern had a number of small tank engines. These were designed by William Adams and designated as Class B4 for use in Southampton docks. Two survive, number 96 showing how they originally looked with cutaway cabs on the Bluebell Railway. It bears the name Normandy, all these engines bearing names when working in the docks. Earlier and later varieties of Southampton Docks engines are seen in the form of Ironside, the last survivor from the original Southampton Docks locomotives, and one of Dougal Drummond's small C-14 passenger engines, later used to shunt wagons at the docks, and finally the ultimate steam shunters at Southampton, the class USA 060 tanks. These engines were standard American switcher or shunting locomotives, which were built in the war for use in Europe. A number came to Britain, and with their extremely short wheelbase, proved ideal in the docks with their extremely sharp curves. After the war, the Southern Railway bought 14 of them to replace the B4s. The engines became quite popular for rail tours in the 1960s, and two are seen on the Forley Branch, which runs on the opposite side of Southampton Water to the city itself. This branch was one of the few freight branches on the Southern system serving the Forley Oil Refinery. The second of these engines was to be preserved on the Bluebell Railway, and two others survived, number 30072 on the Keithley and Worth Valley in Yorkshire. 
this engine has wandered in preservation and spent a time in 1990 on the East Lancashire Railway. Its bright green livery is known as Malachite Green and it reflects the last colour scheme used for southern locomotives before nationalisation. The general appearance of the USAs in BR service is seen on number 30065 on the Kent and East Sussex Railway together with another terrier. The London and South Western Railway, which owns Southampton Docks, was the largest constituent of the Southern Railway and thus contributed the most locomotives. Due to the electrification priority, many older types continued to exist well into British Railways days, the most celebrated of which were the Drummond T9 class, commonly known as Greyhounds. This was a late Victorian design that had been updated in the 1920s, which survived to the early 1960s on secondary duties. One was preserved by the Southern Region in the early 1960s and reappeared in a rather garish colour scheme, that of the old LSWR from 1913 to 1923. Subsequently returned to work in the 1980s, it now sports the old Southern Railway Olive Green on the Swanage Railway, to which it's on loan from the National Railway Museum, York. The engine spent the 1980s on the Midhance Watercrest line, where for one brief event it was paired with another locomotive from the same designer, Dougal Drummond, a tank locomotive of the M7 class, also now in the care of the NRM. The Greyhound is the only survivor of 66 T9 class engines and a further 40 developments of it and 80 smaller mixed traffic variants. Although the T9s were the first of the line, they were the most effective and this was borne out by their survival to the 1960s whilst the others all went in the 1940s and 50s. This particular engine was built in 1899. It was hardly ideal to work over the steeply graded Mint Hans line, which is why it later went to Swanage. is one of two survivors of the class of 105 of the final suburban tank engine designed for the LSWR. After their original duties were electrified, they migrated to country branches to work short passenger trains operated on the push-pull principle. For many years, they dominated the Midhance line in its pre-preservation days, 
and here we see 30379 engaged in those duties. Curiously, they continued to have duties in the London suburban area as they were employed to take coaches from the maintenance depot at Clapham Junction to Waterloo right up until the early 1960s when they were replaced by British Railway's own standard tank engines. Drummond was something of a pioneer in standardization. His 700 class freight engines shared many components such as the mechanical parts and boilers with the M7 tanks and T9s. These small engines were the South Western's largest freight locomotives until the First World War and were commonly known as black motors. Drummond's successor, Robert Urey, realized that something larger was needed and produced a series of 460 designs which were developed into the Southern Railway's own standard goods engines known as the S15 class. This is the last built of these engines which were equally effective on passenger trains as freight as the Southern never had any really heavy freight duty hauls and at weekends needed extra locomotives to deal with holiday traffic. Two of the original Southwestern series of S15 survive on the Midhands Railway. One is in working order and has been restored to the Southern Olive Green livery. It can be fairly said that this was the progenitor of the classic British 460. It was the first to employ two outside cylinders with modern valve gear, and British Railway's own final 460 designs were to the same overall pattern. The Southwestern had 20 of them, and 11 of the earlier pattern with slightly larger driving wheels, class H15. A number of the later Southern Railway built development of the S15 survived. Number 841 is one of the very last batch built in 1936 and today works on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. From the back of the tender of 841 we can see the layout of the driving cab as we take a ride along the Moors line. The cab appears to be quite spartan but this was the general theme of steam locomotive cabs. Only in later years were fully enclosed cabs provided, and these were often uncomfortably hot and airless. The classic open cab was quite effective when running forwards, which was the normal direction of travel. Robert Urey also produced a series of passenger 460s, very similar to the freight S15s. These were also developed by his successor on the Southern Railway into the celebrated King Arthur's. Here once again is the sole survivor, Sir Lamuel. In southern days, drivers were plagued by drifting smoke. So the King Arthurs were equipped with large metal shields or smoke deflectors at the sides of the smoke box in an effort to lift the exhaust clear. Here Sir Lamuel illustrates this phase of the locomotive's career. In total, the Southern Railway produced 54 King Arthurs, in addition to the 20 bequeathed to it by the LSWR. 
There were two distinct types, those built by the railway itself at Eastleigh Works and those produced in Scotland by the North British Locomotive Works in Glasgow. Sir Lamuel is one of those Scotsmen, as is the engine seen here in the early 1960s, near the end of their service careers. All the Scotsmen bore the names of Knights of the Round Table, while the railway-built machines included the class leader, King Arthur himself, as well as his queen, Guinevere. One of this series, Sir Lamarack, is seen leaving Waterloo in 1961. The principal difference is the shape of the cab roof, which restricted these engines to certain routes. Heavy tank engine versions of the original Yuri locomotives existed, known as class H16 and G16. And it was perhaps surprising that the Southern Railway should produce a small freight engine in the 1930s. Richard Maunsell designed the Q-class to replace various obsolete small tender engines from the pre-grouping companies. They were neat and effective engines, and one out of 20 built has been preserved on the Bluebell Railway, where we see it ascending Freshfield Bank. This little engine represents Maunsell's final design. His largest design was the four-cylindered Lord Nelson class, 16 of which were produced in the 1920s. This was a well-known class, again due in part to the publicity value of giving them names of all-time English heroes. The first engine, Lord Nelson himself, is preserved in a rather bilious version of the post-war Malachite Green. The engine worked for the first part of the 1980s on British Rail main lines, but stood out of use at Carnforth Depot at the beginning of the 1990s. It's owned by the National Railway Museum. Maunsell's most successful locomotives were his school's class. These were the most powerful 440 express passenger locomotives in Europe. These engines were a scaled-down Lord Nelson with a shortened King Arthur boiler and three cylinders. They were built to work on the restricted Hastings route, hence the reversion to the old-fashioned 440 layout. Three have been preserved, 
Repton on the Great Central and this engine, Stowe, on the Bluebell. Forty schools were built and their influence was felt throughout the southern system. Not so the next morsel classes, the Z080 shunting tanks and W general freight engines. These two classes were used in the London area to shunt freight trains and to haul transfer freights to and from the other regions. W's were a freight-only development of Morsell's general-purpose U and N260 tender engines, or moguls. These were originally produced for the South Eastern and Chatham Railway and were divided into two main types, the U with six-foot driving wheels and N's with five-foot six-inch drivers. This is one of the U class, which were regarded primarily as passenger engines. Three have been preserved, number 1638 on the Bluebell Railway. This engine illustrates the class as built without smoke deflectors. 30 of these engines were built to this pattern and a further 20 were rebuilt from the river class, fast passenger tank engines. One of the latter came to grief at Seven Oaks in 1927 and ended the use of tank engines on express passenger work on the Southern. The short runs were really very well suited to the tank engine format. the subsequent fitting of smoke deflectors to this engine. One of the smaller wheeled Maunsell moguls of class N survives on the mid hans line. Here it heads a visitor to the railway up the severe bank out of Alton. The N moguls appeared all over the southern network and in total there were 80 of them. Theirs was an interesting history. Richard Maunsell had come to the Southeastern and Chatham railway system from Ireland to find a run-down and obsolete locomotive fleet, a product of the amalgamation of the Southeastern railway and the London, Chatham and Dover railway, two former rivals. The moguls were the first modern designs on the new system, 
were adopted by the government as a wartime standard, or WD type. Excessive numbers were built, and eventually 50 were acquired from the government by the Southern Railway, whilst others went to Ireland and the Metropolitan Railway. The Southern engines became well known in the West Country, where they replaced many pre-grouping designs, surviving to the end of steam. also turned his hand to updating the SECR's express passenger locomotives. Weight limits necessitated a continuance of the smaller 440 types previously in use, so his L1 class was an update of a previous design, using weight-saving techniques wherever possible, the locomotives being quite an advance over the L class, which had appeared just before the First World War. In addition, he rebuilt some of the earlier 440s to produce the E1 and D1 classes, which resembled the L1. A number of the original D class escaped this rebuilding and worked in their original form until the 1950s. And one, number 31737 seen here, was preserved in 1957 as SECR number 737, but sadly not in working order. Classes C and O1 were 060 goods engines of the Southeastern Railway, the former being a larger type than the latter. One of each has been preserved. The O1 seen here has a chequered history as a preserved machine. It was stored at Ashford Works for many years, but when its owner went bankrupt, its ownership fell into dispute. Nothing has been heard of it for many years. The C class has been restored on the Bluebell Railway. The C-Class had a tank engine equivalent, Class H. These 044 tanks were built to the order of Maunsell's predecessor, Wainwright. 66 were constructed between 1904 and 1915, and one is preserved, number 263, again on the Bluebell. It's had two overhauls in preservation, and was to take the rails once again in 1991, restored in the full glory of the elaborate SCCR green livery with an ornate brass dome. The H tanks were the general purpose local passenger engines in the southeast used on motor trains and were stylistically very similar to a class of 060 tanks, the R ones, which were built from 1888 to 1898. This example had a cut down chimney for working over the south's first railway, the Canterbury and Whitstable line. The Class R tanks were from the southeastern's rivals, the London, Chatham and Dover Railway. 18 were built, the last going in 1956. One of the most popular SECR classes was the diminutive P class of light shunting engines. Two of these were the first locomotives on the first large-scale preservation project in Britain, the Bluebell Railway, and were named Bluebell and Primrose respectively. They still work today. Bluebell Railway was to extend its working line in the 1990s and Bluebell was used on a shuttle service over the first part of this extension, propelling its train at Horsted Keynes. Out of eight built, four P's survive. Not quite a record, but one of the highest proportions of a class to survive. 1556 shows how it used to be on the Kent and East Sussex Railway. Kesra, as the railway is known, houses a number of small ex-southern engines. Two of the Brighton Terriers run here and are seen together illustrating two livery styles. 
The railway has a third terrier, but this hasn't worked yet. In total, seven of these small 060 tanks have worked in preservation, and ten still exist. Some have spent a period as pub signs. Their small size but reasonable power make them very economical for use on lightly loaded trains. the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway's policy to name all its passenger locomotives in the 19th century. And most tank engines were named after towns or boroughs served by the railway. This policy has been updated by the Kesra on this engine, whose restoration was funded by the London borough of Sutton. Its name, Sutton. Terriers, officially class A1X, were immortalised by the Reverend Audrey in his famous railway engines books, and the Bluebell Railway's Stepney featured therein. Consequently, the engine often returns the compliment by wearing a face. The children love it. To commemorate the Terrier's last working home, the Hailing Island branch, the Bluebell ran Stepney as the Brighton Work Shunter in 1988, 25 years after the branch closed. Incidentally, another nickname of the class was Rooters. Bluebell has another working A1X, number 32636. It was one of the final survivors working at Hailing until November 1963. Built in 1872, it originally carried the name Fenchurch, was sold out of service in 1898 and returned to the Southern in 1927. Not an unusual career for one of these engines. The Brighton was predominantly a tank engine railway, and William Stradley produced a number of other designs, including the D3042 tanks and E1060s, the latter an enlargement of the Terriers. Some of these were converted to 062 tanks by the Southern for use in the West Country. 76 were built as E1 and 10 converted to the E1R062 specification. O62 tanks came in a number of forms on the Brighton. 32418 is an E6, a freight type with small 4 foot 6 inch driving wheels. The passenger version had 5 foot drivers and was class E4. The standard Brighton freight tender engine was class C2, built by the Vulcan foundry and known as Vulcans. The largest freight engines used by the LBSCR were the class K260s. These were very successful locomotives, 17 of which were built between 1913 and 1921. Only six of the larger Marsh Atlantics were built. They became celebrated as the last of their type in service in Great Britain. The final Brighton passenger class was a large Baltic or 464 tank, seven of which were built and converted to 460 tender engines after 1935, when the Brighton main line was electrified. This engine was named Remembrance as a mobile memorial to Brighton men who perished in the First World War. Regarded by many as the ugliest engines ever built, were the first locomotives produced with the design of the last Southern Railway Chief Mechanical Engineer or locomotive designer.
Oliver Bullard was appointed to succeed Maltzler and proved to be an eccentric genius. He threw all conventions out of the window with all his locomotive types, these class Q1 060s known as Charlies being just the start of it. They were the most powerful 060s to appear in the UK and were regarded as a wartime austerity design. So were his Pacifics, at least according to Bullitt, who produced the first of his controversial Merchant Navy, West Country and Battle of Britain locomotives in 1941. These are two of the West Country class seen in the mid-1960s. Their slab-sided features gained them the nickname Spam Cans, and they were described as being air-smoothed rather than streamlined, and a large number have been preserved. This is probably the best known amongst them, City of Wells, which has had a long career on the main lines of British Rail, being based at Keithley in Yorkshire. Here we see City of Wells at Keithley, passing the connection between the preserved line and British Rail. On the Keithley branch, the West Country is seen making light of the climb out of Oakworth. These engines were known as Light Pacifics, as they were a scaled-down version of the original Bullard Pacifics, the Merchant Navies, which we'll see shortly. Another light Pacific is 257 Squadron, a Battle of Britain. There was no physical difference between West Country and Battle of Britain classes. This was merely a naming policy. Another Battle of Britain to be preserved is Tangmere on the Midhance Railway. It is yet to run, but a preview was given by running the railway's West Country engine with the Battle of Britain's name and number, emphasising the commonality of the two apparent classes. Here seen with its normal identity is the same engine, Swanage, together with the Midhance other working West Country Bodmin. Although they look strikingly different, they're both of the same class. The original bullet design was full of controversial features, most obvious of which was the air smooth casing and the fact that the mechanics or valve gear were hidden from sight. Many problems resulted from these features, mainly on the maintenance side and so British Rail reconstructed the engines from 1957 onwards. As this was near the end of steam, not all were done, and a halt was called to the programme when 55 out of 110 engines were rebuilt.
had one unusual duty in when it was taken to the Isle of Grain in Kent to head the first train of concrete tunnel segments for use in the Channel Tunnel, it being there for publicity purposes. The Bully Pacifics have always been associated with one of the most famous passenger trains of all time, the Golden Arrow. Another mainline locomotive is Tor Valley, which visited the Channel Tunnel threatened Folkestone Harbour branch in 1991, from where the Golden Arrow used to work. This branch was celebrated for its 1 in 30 gradient, the steepest on a BR main line, so engines always needed a banker or helper engine. The bullets were notorious for slipping, so were not ideal engines for such duties. They were also not ideal as freight engines, one of the original series of 30 Merchant Navy class of 1941 is seen on a demonstration freight on the East Lancashire Railway. Celebrating the names of the shipping companies that use the Southern's Great Port of Southampton, these locomotives were pronounced mixed traffic by Bullitt to soothe offended nerves during wartime when it was felt that powerful express passenger locomotives were not appropriate. This engine is Canadian Pacific, one of the first batch of these engines. Like the smaller Pacifics, the merchant navies were rebuilt by British Railways. In this case, all 30 of the class receiving the treatment. So far, three of the engines have worked in preservation. This is Port Line working on the Bluebell Railway. Perhaps the best known of these engines is 35028 Clan Line, which was bought directly out of service from British Rail in 1967 and has worked over their approved steam routes through the 70s and 80s. In 1991 it was withdrawn for overhaul and this is its last working prior to overhaul. <laughs> 
finally, we see Clan Line once again just before her withdrawal. She was the last of the merchant navies to be rebuilt, effectively the last design of southern steam locomotive, as the rebuilding constituted a virtually new type in 1956, when the first of these Pacifics was reconstructed. They lasted in service to the very end of steam on the southern, and carry the flag today.